Hi, welcome back to another episode of Idol Stand Nation. All three of us are here, plus our scumbag manager, Me6. Because, <clears throat> you know, what the heck with that guy. But, <laughs> uh, you don't see him on the screen, you don't need to see him. You, you'll never see him, uh, we're just using him, so in case something happens to our audio. He, uh, he, he's a background worker. He's a background worker, <laughs> he's, also, he's also my favorite punching bag. So. When he works, he's a background worker. Uh jeez. Yeah. So, uh man, this week was pretty uh, it was pretty chill week. Uh, we still had a couple a few hype songs though. Um, we had a there were a lot of releases though. There was still a lot of re releases. Um, was it we had one one debut as well. So, uh, let's go on to this first one. So this first one, we talked about him before. Uh, some with his uh, debut. Was yep. uh, this is a collab with a long time industry veteran, Big Tio. She initially debuted in, I want to say it was like 1997 or 1996. Uh, she had a very uh, established career back then. Mm -hmm. Had a little bit, had a small controversy. Well, I want to say small. It was enough to quit her on hiatus for a long time. But she right. went back into the industry. Um, she's been active for, what, nine years now? The past nine years or so? Yeah, I mean, she she was she was getting back into the industry when I got into K-pop. Yep. Back in yeah, I like remember 2012 it too. ish. Yep. And uh, even I, I personally still have a, a couple of her albums too. Like one of her albums, like from 2003, I think 2002. I got mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. uh, she, man, this is a bit. Yeah, I think it's what the first time we've talked about her on on the show. So. I is think it? so. Yeah. Yeah, we may have mentioned her once in passing before, but. Uh, you so, guys so. may have mentioned her. <laughs> I, yeah, maybe. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't mention her. So this is Big Too Young, and Aung oh, San Luis didn't say anything. So Nick, why don't you go ahead and take us into what the song is? So this song is very much, uh, as you expected, it, it's it's a very toned down ballad. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, as as it goes, it very much develops into. Especially when Onsung Wu comes in, it very much develops into um, a duet, which, yes. a, as it is, but developing into a duet when you didn't introduce the first artist, you know, in the first verse, is very is naturally just very difficult because right. it's like this guy comes in, it's like, oh, it's a feature. Well, this is not a feature. Right. This is very very different than a feature because this is a true duet. Mm -hmm. Um. And. Um, for for those of you that might be wondering, the difference between a feature and a duet, a feature is going to have an artist is going to have a verse, and that's pretty much all they're going to have. Yeah, like they they, mm -hmm. they, they may have what maybe twenty twenty five percent of the line distribution. Twenty five percent is is a lot for a feature. Yeah, that, it's like really yeah, that, that, that does sound like a lot. But yeah, I mean, like I'm not... also counting like the ad libs and whatnot too. So yeah, so like for a feature, most of the time they're going to get a verse, maybe a part of the chorus. And then they're out. Mm -hmm. They're done. Usually well, in the middle of a song. Okay. You usually get some ad libs in there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd I'd say a good example would would be I use eight uh, with uh, Sugar. Sugar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That that in, in itself is a feature. I mean, he got he got one verse, one rap. He was gone. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was in the middle of the song. So mm -hmm. that that is definitely the a feature. A a duet is someone who's going to be there the entire length of the song. Is going to be you know singing along is going to be doing harmony stuff like that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um for this it's it's really impactful honestly um you know back when big Z young you know debuted in, as an artist vocal the vocal styles were very very different than today mm -hmm. oh yeah and seeing seeing the fact that uh big Z young and Onsung Woo can sing together and still maintain a balance because there are some vocal styles that just don't match Right. Yeah. Right. And seeing that they can still maintain a balance is really uh really interesting to see. Um mm -hmm. I really I definitely really like how they played off each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. um cuz especially when but during their, during the harmonies, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where Big Young would just really start to belt out uh like she, even though she's coming in with with more power She's not overpowering Ong Sung Woo, right? Because like they're occupying different spaces, right? 
So like you can still, he's, it's like his his voice is providing like this like this really warm, kind of like supporting layer. Yep. And she's like, on she's like projecting off the top of that, so you can hear both of the voices you know clearly. In addition to the musical accompaniment, like that was very masterful. I thought. Yep. So. I agree. Uh, I also thought the mixing was really well done here. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, I, th- I think I think it says a lot for me, right? Um, if I don't have any any complaints about the mixing. Like, that means the mixing was done very well. Mm-hmm. So, I, and I, I mean, I pick on that. So, there are definitely times where I've not complained about the mixing, and the mixing could have been done better. Mm-hmm. But I think the mixing was done really well here, especially you're because you're working with a low male register and yeah, a very right. high female register, mm-hmm. and so the mixing can get a little weird because you don't want to put every put the higher ends loud and drown out the higher the the female voice. You don't want to put the lower ends too loud and drown out the male voice. Right. Right. Yeah. So, it, there's definitely this this like weird kind of mixing mastering you have to do, and I think they with the musical accompaniment, the musical accompaniment made the mixing really easy in this song. Yeah, yep. because there was no they didn't go with like a hard bass, you know they didn't right. go with high end synths. Mm. They just mm-hmm. went for kind of run of the mill, you know, um, you know drum bass guitar, you know just kind of run of the mill uh, ballad instrumentation. Yeah. yeah, and you know the instrumentation. I thought at times, um, and it's not a complaint. It's more like I thought, like I think it was like really cool. Like there was at times where the instrumentation kind of felt transparent. Mm-hmm. Like they, uh-huh. they were there, but they were like doing a really good job of supporting their vocals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, like pushing that vocals, you know, pushing the, the vocals in the song forward. Like, like wow. Yeah. Um, and the, my like my only gripe with this song and this is me being picky but my only gripe with this song is that when on Sung Woo went for his high notes he wasn't brought forward enough yeah yeah and they didn't they didn't increase his volume to make the high note more impactful mm-hmm. so it felt like he was just singing higher and there it, it's hard to do that because if you bring him too far forward you drown out Big Zeon right mm-hmm but if you don't bring him far enough forward, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like the high note is impactful. It doesn't feel right. like it's doing anything. I, 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 I do recall at that point too, where it felt like um, uh, the strings was kind of like blending into his voice too at yeah. that point. And that's that's because he was so far back in the mixing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they definitely should have brought him forward some. Mm-hmm. Um, because like if you if you look at a ballad, the high note like. We've talked a lot about dynamics. Yeah. You know, being loud when you need to be. Mm-hmm. And yeah. high note high notes and pin like what we call pinnacle notes are really uh which are very loud, you know, uh are are just that. Like they're meant to be loud, they're meant to be, you know, higher because it's the pinnacle of the song. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 that climax of the song before it's brought down. You're right. Uh the best way you can interpret that is a song is written very much like a mo- or like a book plot. You have your introduction, mm-hmm. you have your build up, the climax, and then you have the take the the downward spiral, which is usually where you, where uh, you're relaxing. resolving. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're resolving the the story. Yep. Uh, yep. Into a into a conclusion. Yep. Huh. But it it didn't really feel like <laughs> you good or yeah, yeah. Like ah 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 for for me ah. Uh, I didn't. I. I don't. You. Everybody knows. I ain't known any of these words, and I'm like, oh, so, so that's so how that works. When you, when you think back mm-hmm. to all of our previous episodes, like, well, you haven't said something like this in a while, but you know, we've said before, um, songs tell a story, right? Mm-hmm. So now, this like kind of further ties that in, like what, what Nick is talking about yeah. when yep. you say like, you know, these songs t- are telling a story. Like, yeah, you have the climax. And you, yeah. Right. So. I'm. I mean, for me, like, it's a. It, I'm mainly visual um i'm i'm heavy on the visuals uh so for, for me i i i know where the like climax of an, an mv is not from music the music itself but from the story in the music video mm-hmm. so yeah that's what that's what i figure out where the high points are is um so I'll probably look more into it for the what was it pinnacle point? the pinnacle okay the pinnacle yeah the pin the pinnacle of the music which is usually yep. which is that high note 
that's that that's that that's that climax where it's at the at the peak of the song okay yeah you can get and like um you can kind of tell you like when they're when they're leading up to it because like a lot of times right um especially like when, when a song has like violins in it right they usually use the violins to like kind of mm-hmm. like you do they'll gradually bring up the like the the, the um like the um the scale mm-hmm. like the scale the drums will also sometimes go and the drums will, will pick up well, yeah exactly they'll pick up on the pace so like you know it's kind of like uh, um in a movie right when you're they're building up to like this this either scary scene or um this really like high adrenaline rush scene or it's like you can you can hear it right like the vines yep. are, are starting to like starting to su- right. su- and they're screeching right. and then the drums are like going crazy yeah you know, that's oh. leading up to that to that so yep that that's definitely like um but yeah it, it, back to like the original topic that that's my really only gripe of the song is it didn't feel like it had a pinnacle you know there was no yeah. climax to the song yeah, cause they had, because they had that they build up, the book was there but they yeah. it's like here's, here's it, the build it didn't up deliver. it was going up to here but then it tapers off there so yeah, yeah. It, it just kind of it just kind of goes back down and it's like yeah well what was that you know yeah like okay yeah I, and and, and I, it's definitely it, it definitely felt like um because they lowered uh on some uh vocals a little bit too closer to the background that that yeah and my my guess is ultimately if if you put them together in a room we can't tell because this has been mixed and mastered but if mm-hmm. you put them together in a room i guarantee you he sings louder than she does yeah like a lot louder right. he probably has a much more powerful voice and so they had to push him back right. to bring her out to make them match mm-hmm. um because in a duet that that is one thing you have to work with you can't have someone um a great example is you can't have someone like like Ailey mm-hmm. singing with like ball four. Oh yeah and you Ailey can't, would definitely overpower ball it would just four. be overpowering and yeah. they can do a duet that's fine but it a raw duet it would it would be like a mess if you just put them it, you know on mm-hmm. the same track you have to mix and, and master to make it work and big yeah. she, she's older now too like she mm-hmm. she doesn't have because she was a powerful vocalist back in the day um uh, she did have a lot of power but as you as you get older i mean like this is it's been 20 something years now she's since she debuted yeah so, so as as you get older especially if you continue singing your it's just like it's just like if you use your muscles a lot when you're you know if, if you're an athlete eventually mm-hmm. they get tired and they don't recover yeah. as well mm-hmm. um and i'm sure like you know since she's been you know singing for a really long time her her throat muscles especially like her larynx her vocal cords mm-hmm. are all tired mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's what you see when you see like a lot of american artists who like have sung for, for like 40 years yeah they're they're usually their voices are relatively scratchy right and um, that's their vocal cords being tired right this is something that we saw with Park Bomb on Queendom. Oh yeah. She she wanted to sing earlier yep. because her vocals aren't as strong as they used to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's she's in her thirties, so Big Deal right. is in her forties. So. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of other things that relate to to Park Bomb and why her voice is is struggling as much as it is, and that relates mm-hmm. to back to being an idol and how she was kind of forced to sing back then yeah mm-hmm. but oh, there's the dog um Hi, puppies. so yeah as far as that goes so all right with this song being as emotional as it was um i really liked it the video like matched up well so yeah convey, did they convey so, like those emotions very well yeah the lighting was done cho- the lighting that was chosen helped convey the emotions it wasn't like flowery they didn't use like pastel colors they used darker a lot of dark dark colors white was also another heavy color that they used Mm -hmm. to display the emotion but and then visually like they weren't using a lot of sets they were still in one place they were in i think a warehouse or whatever or a simulation of a warehouse most likely just a studio Mm-hmm. empty studio but they didn't use overuse the setting like they didn't throw in like flowers they didn't throw in like beds or whatever they kept it simple to convey and use the setting and the placement of both Big Ji Young and Ong Sung Woo to 
convey the feelings. They they even use the singers themselves as the props for, to convey those feelings. And being able to do that isn't always easy. We've seen a lot of music videos where they just have a singer just be there or have a singer just dance or whatever. Right. And it's not really utilizing, always utilizing the members to the best of the, the, ab the ability. But this one, uses the settings really well, the lighting really well. Even the artists themselves become part of the music video. Like the placements of where they're sitting, how they're sitting, when they're singing together, it conveys an apartness, but also at the same time, a sense of closeness at the same time. Yeah, because... For um, example... What was it? Like, wasn't oh, there a lot of scenes where there were um, a lot of scenes of them just separate, right? But then mm -hmm. there was a couple times where so you had the duets where it was showing them together, especially like later on in the song, right? Exactly. It's like a, kind of like what you're talking about, right? We're trying to kind of come back together. So. Mm -hmm. As, especially when they're belting each of their notes, um, mm -hmm. it, it, or when they're singing, when they're singing together, it shows they try to have them together or facing each other. Right. But then there were those instances but where they, they had, were, had their fa backs to, towards each other too. And it, it, even the parts where they were fa you know, together and facing each other, they were still kind of like a distance, right? Like they were, or the camera was kind of mm -hmm. pulled back to kind right. of yeah, like, like they're they're trying to reach each other, but they're still really it, far apart. Exactly. It, in in a way, it, it was they're trying to convey a message f um, from each other, but those messages aren't being like actually sent mm -hmm. it's like a miscommunication kind of thing yep. hence the title didn't say anything right <laughs> yeah no so um this song you know is very is, is a is a is a very emotional uh, ride right um, both mm -hmm. both the song and the music video um right? and coming from such a, a, a long-standing veteran artist um and mm -hmm. a, a, a amazing artist on some world Highly recommend. Right. So. I can actually definitely see this uh, coming up in, as an OST for like a K drama <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or getting picked up to to be used in a drama. Yeah. Right. So, gentlemen, are you ready to move it on? Yeah, I think so. So, all right, this is your hype song. Why don't you go ahead and bring it in? All right. So for me, this is okay. Now that I think about it, it's. It's, it's a J, JYP uh, group, obviously. Um, Day Six's Zombie has released, and this is a this song hits on so many levels because um, we all we've all gone through life. We're all getting older, and it's so good. And especially with how this song, Zombie, and how Day Six is is actually going on hiatus after this song release. Hmm. They, they're going on a mental health hiatus. Okay. Okay. So, and I mean, I could definitely understand that if you listen to the lyrics of the song. Yeah. This or if you song, actually understand the lyrics. <laughs> well, that's true. Um, you know, this song is. You know, if you if you read through the lyrics, I mean, it's not for like the faint of heart. You know, mm -hmm. this song is really emotion. It's jam packed full of emotion and full of like despair and yep. mm -hmm. you know. And you, when I remember when I was reading through the lyrics, uh, I was talking to Aura at the time. I was like, "Yeah, someone needs to get checked up. Like this is this what they're talking about is serious." Yeah, you know, especially if if true. You know, not all, not all lyrics inside of K-pop are true, right? Mm -hmm. But you know this being written by the members yeah by two say, of the members they six they, don't they uh, compose their own songs so uh yeah for the most yeah. part i don't know if every single one of their songs has been composed by them but yes but this, this one yeah. this one is written and composed by the, some of the members yeah mm -hmm. I, I do remember that with uh with this song um and so like the with the song um because it starts off kind of droney right kind of mm -hmm. um subdued like you're you know, kind of like a zombie kind of slothing through this, you know yeah slothing along mm -hmm. um and the song definitely kind of really well not kind of it definitely 
convey that 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 feeling and that sense. Um, I don't know, like with the relating back to the lyrics, um, because they was well, after like the first minute or fifty seconds of the song, it starts. That's when the song starts to uh, move on to like the next to the next uh, series, right? Right. The moment they, s- I feel like it's around that they start going. Um, I'm a zombie. Is is when it starts picking up a little bit, okay, and changing a little bit of the tune. Yeah. And so, then, yeah. So, so Nick, uh, why don't you go ahead and, and take us through that journey of the song? Oh man. Um, I mean, like you pretty much just stated, this song is is a journey, and I think as they were writing this, they they kind of they kind of noticed that the song is is like it's it's hard to ex- explain like we just talked about the song tells a story mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but in this in this song it more tells a thought process yes it's a thought process and it, it doesn't really like as far as like storytelling goes it kind of it feels like it, it it's one of those uh, those uh, stories that doesn't have a resolution at the, at the conclusion i yeah i definitely feel like there is no there is no resolution there there's no like look on the bright side moment yeah. you know right um, especially if you look at like some of the lyrics after the second chorus or like at the second chorus maybe verse three they say like um, you know they say like I'm a, I'm a zombie um, like I'm dead but I'm still walking yeah mm-hmm. and or not breathing and I'm still walking or something like that and oh, that, is that what the lyrics was yeah like it's seriously like mm-hmm. the the feeling it it's quite literally the feeling of depression. Yeah, you right. Yeah, it's, um, depression. Uh, that feeling of being in a rut. So like you know, when you think back to when you're when you're in school or at a at a really uh, crappy job that you don't like. You know, every day you're just you're just showing up, you're shuffling along, going through going through the emotions, going through going through life. Yep. Go back home. Yeah. Go to sleep next morning wake up do it all over again that you just, you don't feel like that spark of joy of life um, you're just shuffling along like a zombie right and yeah. and you very much see that in the MV too like the the guy the actor uh, or whoever is going just going through the trudges of life you know mm-hmm. he's exa- yep. it's almost as if he's exhausted with life yep. and yep. it's not like because if you watch zombie movies, they're kind of walking aimlessly. They're not... Obviously, in zombie movies, they're eating brains and whatnot. That's not the case yeah. for this. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, he, he was just trudging through life. And it, it was while he was slow and sluggish, the world kept on going. Without, yeah. at, 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 uh, f- to him, what, se- what probably seemed like a quick speed. Rapid pace, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, and, and that's another feeling that's kind of uh, relatable too for for everybody. I mean, we, we all have this points in times where, yeah, we're just de- we're de- you know not we're unhappy with our life. You know, we're we're just trudging along, but it feels like mm-hmm. everyone else is progressing along, and everyone else is happy. Everyone else is mm-hmm. is finding that spark in life. But here yeah. I am. Yeah, you know. and um, and you know, so I think, and I also I think like like you said, everyone's felt that way. You know, mm-hmm. at some point, and everyone's feeling is very similar to this. Uh, in the the last four lines of the last four lyrics of the song is, "I became a zombie. There's nothing that can cure me. So tomorrow, I know I'll just be the same, yep. and you'll see me wishing to stop and close my eyes." Yeah. So literally, it's it's that feeling of like nothing's going to change. You know, nothing will ever change. It'll be like this for for forever. You know. Right. Yep. Um. And you know, and I th- I think there is no better song for them to go on a mental hiatus after. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you, you know this this song um, kind of reminds me of uh, Bull Forest Twenty Five as well. And yeah. if you remember last uh, last year Twenty Five was a big hit in Korea because mm-hmm. everybody could relate to to that feeling. So I feel like um, this song could also um, see some success, maybe not to the same level, but see some some pretty good success because a lot of people in Korea. And not just in Korea, um, around the world, if you can relate to this. I was I was gonna say, and even right. that, Day Six always drops English versions, so I'm pretty sure I'm pretty yep. I'm 
99% certain Zombie already has an English version out. Yep. Yeah. So th- th- I- I'm going to go look for it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so if you're someone that like, you know, that connects better with, with English lyrics, because they're there, you can understand them and they're much more relatable. Then definitely go check out the English version. Yeah. If there is. So uh, describe, describe the, the musical style for this. So, I mean, it's day six, um, so we know it, um, it's going to be some variant of rock. Yes, I mean, it it is and isn't rock at the same time. Yeah. Um. There was a there was a time in rock in the the early '90s where, but it wasn't long enough to really be dubbed. Everyone called it depression rock. Mm-hmm. And it was it was very much this kind of similar feeling. Yeah, because uh, um, doesn't it also kind of take take some cues after like uh, uh, what am I thinking of like not uh, not like experimental rock. I'm thinking of like uh, uh, like Beck um, again because because uh, he he also had uh, quite a few uh, songs that were also like really droney, kind of similar in style to this as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, this is a uh, one of the sub sub genres of uh, one of the many sub genres of, of rock that it's not not like that. It, the, it's the hard it's not a shooting. super hot, yeah, not yeah. hard hitting, yeah, not it, like yeah. Pu- yeah. party, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not, yeah, you're, you're not. Uh, banging if someone to this. parties to the song, please send me a video. By the way, <laughs> um, uh, one hundred percent. Um, so. But yeah, I, I definitely this this is definitely a very niche genre. I would say for this song in specific, it's very much more lenient towards pop than rock. Right. Yeah, I mean, because uh, pop, uh, pop, pop, yeah, I would say like um, pop rock had had its also also had its moments too back in like the early two thousands. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so Aura. Yep. Why don't you go ahead and relate that that journey of the song to the video? Well. I mean, like I mentioned before, I think we it, actually it, talked it, about that, didn't we? Yeah, we. Yeah, we, I'm yeah, like, we, we, we. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I can repeat it, like charging through life, <laughs> yeah. zombie. Yeah. Oh, wait, did you have? Okay, um, so more like, did you have anything else that you wanted to to talk or ha- kind of highlight that we didn't um, touch on yet? I, I find I found the choice of like the costume that the, they gave to the zombie. Because if you look at it, he he's got that. He's got a suit. He's, yep, he's got, got that ascot. Yep. I'm surprised I even know what that is. Um, <laughs> it just means that but, we all know that Aura wears ascots on his, on his uh, when he's not recording. So. Okay. 100%, 100% I would love. I would love to have an ascot. Okay. I would uh, love to have an ascot. Uh, <laughs> you would too. You would. <laughs> but it, it's like so it's the opposite of how when you normally think of zombies, they're usually in tattered clothes, right. probably drenched in blood. But with this, he still looks professional. It's his face that is yeah. drowned out. And not only that, but like he wakes up f- looking dead. He, mm-hmm. like, from, from, but he'll still trudge through life looking at professional. He'll look, try to look like everyone else. Put, put on the game face. You know, do, exactly. Do, do the emotions. And that's, and even then he'll go when he goes to bed. He'll still, he he's still going to wear that costume. He's still going to go just trudge through life, even in his sleep, because it's 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 almost an eternal feeling. Right. Like like Nick said before. Yeah. Those those and, when those periods in life happen to you, it feels like forever. Like, life can be exhausting. Life can be hard. And from the lyrics to the so- sound of the music and to the visuals, it's all about how life can be hard. How life is... You, you can just be trudging through life and it's just almost meaningless. Yeah. It's it, exhausting. It, it just feels like the, the music video is like nothing but, but pain. Like... Just right. pain, is, pain, suffering, and, and also being just numb at the same time. Mm-hmm. And it, it, like 
you also notice that there's water coming at the very end. So it's like almost like a drowning feeling too. And even if you're drowning, it's never going to go away because what's gonna happen? You're already dead. How can how can drowning continue to kill you if you're already dead? Yep. Right. Um so like you can feel like it you're drowning, but it's never going to end. Right. So And that's what I find so beautiful about this like this is a very beautiful pop rock song. Relatable, and very relatable. Very relatable. That too. Yeah. 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 Relatable so, and beautiful. So Which is weird because uh I've also been watching Jay on Dive Studios uh podcast with like Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With uh and he his personality is absolutely hilarious. So uh, seeing him sing this Chicken song, Little. <laughs> <laughs> uh h- him with like B Cards BM, Amber Lou, uh, Eric Nam. Yeah. And, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's scary. Uh, Alright, so gentlemen, are you ready to move it on? Yeah, I let's so. go. Do you, you want to introduce this one since you're yes. very hyped for it? So, you know, unlike the first two songs, which are kind of depressing to say the least, um, this song is nothing but a hype fest. This is Bandits jungle and oh my Dude. goodness so this song uh if you guys if you guys know right um last year you know i found myself impressed with it with bandit but i never like mm-hmm. really really like like super liked a lot or even loved a lot a lot of stuff that he put out um uh if you remember last year when we talked about dumb you know, during the summer and how we were saying like new, um, a lot of new groups are were ended up kind of venturing into the same realm of sound to try and stand out from like the mainstream stuff Mm-hmm. Or the other mainstream stuff, I feel like this is hitting all the, um, like hitting it just right where, Dom was kind of kind of fell off on. And you know what? I I seriously think Bandit is ahead of the curve every single time, because if you right. remember, Dom was very Latin influence. Yep. Wait, and then we went into a Latin trend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then Latin faded out for a while. Yep. Um. Yeah, because like was it? Um. Uh, well, well, favorite. Had uh had started, I had their was it loca, loca yeah in, in January. Well, loca loca was yeah that which was a while ago and then um which was January of, of last year so yeah they they tried to bring it in didn't catch on and then summer summertime hit and then bandit uh who lost uh, laboon some other new groups but uh you know this this song right here jungle um I don't know man it's like what dumb couldn't do for me this one does. It, it does I think a lot of that. I mean, you got to remember what company they're in, right? M N H, same as Jungle. Yep. And if you if you listen to this, I mean, you could tell. I mean, it's the same producers. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. This has was, a Chungha vibe. I was gonna say too because right. that was that was so that was actually one of my talking points for this because with with this song, um, a lot of their other stuff they put out was a lot more unique to the um, like it was more like more of the own unique flavor. But this year, because yeah. uh, M N H Entertainment is not a a long standing company. Um, no, they were only right. responding in 2017. Chungha was their first artist. Uh, Band yep. is their first girl group. So they're just now. It seems like they're just now starting to kind of develop their own um, in-house flavor, as you as you were. Yeah, because like and for their first girl group, they're doing amazing. They're doing a very Norm- good job. Normally, and this is not something that's talked about very often, but normally, first girl group from a company is a flop. And that's because yeah. they've got to figure out, you know, how to manage. They've got to figure out what managers you need. Yep. They've got to figure out what what methodology to produce comebacks. They've got to figure out how to run their own company. Yeah, while the, yeah while the, while they're doing that, and but M M&H and I think that amazing. they uh, I think that they've gotten a lot of experience from Chungwa. Uh, well, uh, like, and before that, um, the founder was also um, I think he was a producer at JYP as well. Before. Mm-hmm. Was he? Yeah, I know. So I know he was an employee at JYP, but I, I can't remember what his position was. I think he was a mm-hmm. like a producer or or uh, assistant producer or something. So yeah. So like, well, I, I mean, with this music video itself, I think like if Chungwa was participated, I think she would fit in perfectly with this. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that brass as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that that was so unexpected. When he opened it up with that, was so nice. I, I was just like, man, like, 
Is it? Is it? Is this, I'm, I'm like thirty seconds in. Is it too too early for me to say I'm I'm all I'm all in now? Yeah, because I mean, Bandit's last comeback. What was that? Children. Children. Yeah, it was it was R and B. It was just straight up R and B. Was was very R and B, but and even before that was dramatic. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so even before that was dramatic, and they strayed away from that that Latin style. So I I thought of it, they they thought it wasn't good for the group, you know. Right. Because I mean. Dumb was their debut, I believe. No, um, I can't remember their debut. I can't remember their debut. Dumb was their comeback. What is this? Was their yeah. second comeback? Because he had, um, yeah. it wasn't a Hocus Pocus. That was their yes, Hocus Pocus was their debut. Yeah, and yeah. then they had a um, a kind of like a comeback a month later. Uh, it was a performance video released, and then mm-hmm. that's right, yeah. that's right, that's right. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. They. That's that's. Because they 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 kind of forwarded the trend of like coming back one month yeah. later. They had um, they had four releases last year, like yeah. their debut and their as, as as a rookie as a rookie group, yeah. So, and then this year, they are, this is their their third release of the year already. Yeah, and this yeah, kid. we're not even halfway through the year yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because dramatic and it's gonna have year, another. Right? Yeah, because well, um, was it dramatic? I thought they had something. There was something more along. I can't remember. But oh, I but yeah, they had they had this is the third release this year. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, like second MV third release or second non animated because Children was animated, I believe. Yeah, yeah, Children was animated. So with with, with Jungle, um, man, Nick, why don't you go ahead and, and describe like what this sound is because it is. So this is definitely like, like. You know, uh, like a Portuguese or yeah, like a Portuguese Latin influence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was, um, I was, because that's where part where I was kind of confused. I'm like, okay, yeah, I kind of feel like that. What was it um, from like last year again? We were talking about that Latin inspired uh, pop. Yeah, so but it was also really a lot different. of people get very confused when I say Portuguese Latin. Portuguese Latin is very different than Latin American influence. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're talking. It about, is yeah. very, very different. You're talking about an ocean and a continent in a way. So <laughs> yeah, so. When we're talking about Latin America, we're talking we're talking about you know that very like, um, we're talking about that very like not not brass, but like very uh, acoustic, very open soundstage. Mm. When we're talking about when we're talking about Portuguese Latin influence, it's very it's very busy. There's a lot there's a lot going on, um, a lot of synth. Isn't it also you know? like heavily inspired by like uh, med- like the other like Mediterranean sounds or, like you know um, we think of like. You know, Greece and Turkey, like some of their their musical uh, styles as well. Um, no, there it's, there's usually not a whole lot since since that's a whole ocean away. That ocean, like, but yeah. really, I'm t- when I'm t- when I say Portuguese Latin, I mean you know Brazil. Oh, okay, you're talking about Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, it's okay. very like Brazilian Portuguese. Portuguese Latin is pretty much specific to Brazil. Okay, like when you're saying Portuguese Latin, I was I was thinking of like Portugal being right next to Spain, and then that's that's where my mind nah. was at. Okay, no, nah, my bad. Um, so yeah, when I say Portuguese Latin, I mean I mean Brazil. Like okay. Brazil, you get you get some Colombian influence, um, Peruvian influence, stuff like that. Um, but a lot of what's up? For anyone who doesn't know, I have no idea where these places are. I know that they're. In other countries. South America. Okay, see. Yeah. You gotta tell so, me this stuff because geography is not my thing. <laughs> ah. Yeah, so it's it's a lot of South American South American influence. Yep. Um Brazil Brazil's you know, Brazil's music is usually very busy, you know. Um you know, there's a lot of synth. There's there's there is a lot of that influence. Yep. And um a lot of that comes from Brazil in it you know, the busy cities of Brazil being just like that yeah because i want to say that okay. when most americans think of uh latin american music they're typically thinking of Portu- uh, of central Portu- america Portu- uh, Port- puerto rico um, yeah there's there's puerto rico there's um you know there's a lot of mexican influence yeah mm-hmm. you know um it's a lot of central from, america yeah, yeah you, you find a lot of central america central caribbean american, latin american yeah. but what a lot of people t- also tend to forget is there is there's a subset of of Latin American music that is specifically South American. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's you know you f- you find you, you you'll sometimes even find like Mumbaton there. Yep. Y- you know you'll find uh, genres like that. Yeah. So. 
Because uh, it's um, definitely very influenced by by South America specifically. Yeah, because this is very different from what uh, most Americans would be used to with like, uh, especially like uh, reggaeton. Yeah, coming from Puerto Rico. So, yeah, this is like when we say Latin American, like this is like just so different from what yeah. most Americans would think of. So. Yeah. So this this is very much South American, I would say. Whereas if you if you look at Dumb or like uh, some of Mamamoo's releases last year oh, yeah. very latin american that's you know that would be your you know that would be your mexican influence that would be yeah. your puerto rican influence you know okay yeah so this, this and it, so that's one of the reasons why uh for at least for me like this song it just sounds so different and and fresh like mm-hmm. I, I i loved it i really did mm-hmm. a lot so yeah there's also a lot of edm in the song which right. the edm helps kind of pick it up off to feel more in place Kind of, give, kind of, kind of help move it towards like being um, mainstream consumable. Let's say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That definitely helps being mainstream consumable to other markets rather than just South America specifically. Yeah. 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 Which we've seen in the uh, past, other uh, groups tailoring towards South America. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, to go along with it, I've noticed that unlike other uh, groups, that uh, I, I could be wrong. It the vocals were a lot deeper than some. Of the mm-hmm. other like la- la- definitely yes especially too. like the opening the opening vocals um right it, i was taking them back a little bit oh yeah with, same with same I'll, I'll, I'll and you know that kind of helped kind of um bring up bring up more of the hype for myself as well because you know it's it's that just makes it more different for me you know uh, like, right there's kind of like that novelty um and you, we, we've seen some of this too with uh with the previous releases with dumb especially um right but i think that just overall the packaging on this one Mm-hmm. Um, kind of really uh, brings me in because like so Aura you know you, you said earlier um, you know you're not you're now like a, a bandit stand like bro you can count me in well I, I've been into like do we did I say it before we started recording yeah. or after before okay. we started recording when Nick was giving yeah. you a, <laughs> was giving you a hard time <laughs> yeah I, I mean, never I'll... give you a hard time uh, mm-hmm. we just talked right. about this, right? I'm right. innocent right these two give me a hard time all the time, but no, I I really like, cause I still listen to Hocus Pocus mm. a lot, so that's why I was like, dumb was the, what? Who who said? Wh- why are you saying dumb is the, the debut? I've I've been listening to Hocus Pocus since debut. I'm like, hmm, man. Either either that's I'm wrong. I, I, I was like, so so. Can I just say I'm I'm a little. I'm a little uh, so offended, I guess, that you've been you've been like hyped up on, on Bandit with Hocus Pocus this entire time, and you've never shared that with us. Yeah, like we're, we're like we're, uh, we're, we're happy to all the fangirl. You're supposed to like be fangirling in, in a, like on, on a channel. For, okay, let us know. I'm yeah, still busy. I, I'm still busy trying to learn everyone's freaking name. Okay, uh, I still don't have any of their names down, uh, and I feel bad. Oh man, man. must be rough. Trying to be or in learning names. Well, you know, you it, it is horrible. Every, every well, it, well, it's it's not that he's bad at learning names. I swear, it's just his his entire brain is full of AKB names. That too. Well, plus you no. know, when you're that old, every hundred years or so, you have to drop off names. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he hasn't hit the next hundred years mark to drop off the you know drop off names to make new one for new ones. Yeah, yeah. Soon he'll start talking about how he remembers like. Uh, someone back in like the the Goryeo Dynasty debuting. <laughs> so it wouldn't be an episode without without a, a joke about Oro being old. Yeah, I mean, I already got. I'm, I think I have gray hairs just from talking to you guys, man. No, that's, <laughs> like, that's just from the Han Dynasty. <laughs> the Han Dynasty did a number on you. Yeah, it did. It was rough. <laughs> rough time. Rough time. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, oh, okay. with, with that, we'll get back on topic. Yeah. Before we put all our viewers to sleep. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, if you have not listened to, to Banished Jungle and you're, and you want a hype bop, just go for it now. Yeah, go um, for it. Uh, like, and, co- and come back because we have another hype bop to talk about. So. Well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Something about this was that if you really, if you also really like uh, Lion from 
uh, G Idol. Yes. It's, it's got this very empress feeling. This, yeah. this uh, feeling of because they're both uh, both songs very are very much it's Latin similar, based. And they have, they have so of, yeah they have a similar vibe. So they, they don't sound the same. They don't sound very far similar, from it. But they have a similar um, like uh, I guess vibe to it, like a whole, like right. emotion that they kind so, of bring up. Yeah. So th- uh, for me, I like they gave off the similar vibe, but I didn't understand what it was till Nick mentioned it, where Bandit gives a much more South Southern American vibe of the whole Queen and all the like music accompaniment, while uh, G Idols gave off a more of a Central American vibe. That th- and that didn't click with me till uh, Nick was explaining the differences, and due to my lack of uh, geography <laughs> competence, uh, I, it, that's that's when it's, when it started to click with me. Yeah, when it, doesn't um, G Idol also kind of mix in a um, more, more of like a um, so like Central America and then also like kind of like the Cal- like the California uh, style vibe as well, like so the Mexicali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you, if you like uh, G Idol, the um, Queen, and you are, uh, gosh, what's the song again? Lion. 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 If you if you like that, if you like that. If you like that imagery, but you're in for some kind of, if you want some, some kind of, of a different sound, that's still a bop. It, yes, go for go for band. It 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 it's it's, it's it's like Chung Ma and uh, G Idol combined. Oh, bro, yeah. If you especially if you love uh, Chung Ma, yes. Yeah. So, Nick, take us on to our last hype song of the episode. So our last hype song is a very small group that you might not know of. Uh, they had a. This is Universe, with their song "Give You Up," and they they had this. They released this song on uh, May fourteenth, so it's been a few days. Currently has, guess it. Like what? Twelve thousand. Fifteen thousand views. It was uploaded on Genie Music. Make sure you go check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, Universe is a small. It's they're a small boy group under FD Entertainment. Um, they actually originally debuted in uh, Taiwan oh. in 2016. Oh, okay. So they debuted in Taiwan in 2016, and then they um they actually they only debuted in South Korea this year. So my question: Are, are they? Are all the members Taiwanese or no? Most of them are Korean. Okay. Um, there, there is one. Uh, there is one member that I believe is Taiwanese. Okay. Well, you, you got, um, you got to have one if you're gonna be debuting in Taiwan, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, you gotta have the token member. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's joke, joke, joke. Uh, anyway, so. Yes, yeah, so they debuted in Taiwan in 2016. They debuted in South Korea back in February of this year with their okay. song Timeless. And so this is their first Korean comeback. Okay. Okay. So this song, um, yeah, and with the music video too, like I like a lot of that um, kind of like, that cosmic imagery going on. And mm-hmm. if you guys remember, um, I didn't really get into this, this kind of feel and this, this kind of... Uh, vibe and style to like what was it like cosmic girls and luna so mm-hmm. right so like for me like this kind of this goes into the same for at least for my, me personally this goes into the same realm of uh of uh cosmic girls and, and luna in terms of like themes and style like i i, I liked it a lot it's good mm. I, I like i really liked it so yeah same here honestly um i i really enjoyed that that very like like you talked about that that ethereal vibe mm-hmm. like that other um, vibe like you're yeah. Yeah. yeah but it's not it's not the usual ethereal vibe where it's where they use pastel they you yeah it's it's the whole space ethereal vibe where yeah. they use darker colors um purple uh black yeah, but, I mean, granted, there's instances of brighter colors in the, in there too, but yeah, yeah, because like I, it's Luna very, does that too. So. Yeah, it, it feels very like anti-ethereal. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You know, they they t- they take they take the ethereal vibe and put a very dark twist on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I really like I really really like the the song in itself, especially the drop. Right. I think the drop was so so well done. Um because it was very it was very summer. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. It, it like it was a song that I could I could hear literally being played in the summer like in, in the summer while I'm like, you know, driving down the street or whatever. Right. And I really I really enjoyed that kind of that kind of vibe, which is created by the synth. Right. Um So I definitely really liked really liked that. And they transition out of that really well as well. Mm-hmm. You know, back into the verse. They just kind of just bring it back down, you know? Right. And you know, I like one thing that um, really surprised me was uh, you know how like all all the members they have very different um, vocal timbers and, and styles, mm-hmm. even, right? Uh, the musical accompaniment would change to match, but they did it so seamlessly, and like mm-hmm. yeah. their 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 vocals and the, and the musical accompaniment would, would kind of interact with each other and blend in together, mm-hmm. but without like drowning each other out, like. It was yeah, very right. wonderfully balanced. Like, um, and you know, you always talk about momentum. Like this song, just like had a oh, lot. It doesn't stop. Yeah, it was like I was getting, I was getting, I got swept up, you know, by the current, by the uh, by the current of the song, and just like got carried it through. It was like, like, I was just at the end right. of it. I was just like, damn, like damn, son. Uh, yeah, what was that? You know, like wow. Not gonna lie, when you said they only had fifteen thousand views, I was really surprised. It, it's it felt like really something good. more, yeah. It felt like it felt like something yeah. that you would have like three hundred thousand views at least, you know. At minimum, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But apparently, this group um, is not obviously they're they're new go. Right. Mm-hmm. Go figure. I'm talking about a new group, but um, especially on that, like this group is mostly international fans. Yeah. And you, yeah. You know, speaking, considering it's a Taiwanese group provisionally, and I was gonna say it too, like um, I feel like this song style. Um, if you if you love Stray Kids, you should definitely love this song as well. Yes, one hundred percent. It's very Stray Kids vibe. Um, also, that reminds me. Have you noticed the amount of very low pitched rappers we have in groups in boy groups now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's it's seriously become a trend. Yeah. Yeah. Before you would have higher pitch rappers, you know that that yeah. would be able to sing up yeah. there as well. Because like with the higher pitch, it works with such with that kind of rapid fire delivery of rap. Um, yeah, and to help provide that contrast to music to the music. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny because the fir- when the moment you said low pitch rapper, Felix was the first person who popped in Felix, my head. Felix, yep. <laughs> uh, I haven't learned to tease members yet, and I really don't like that. But there's there's one of tease members. Why? Especially with how much you hype them too. I know. I'm, 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 I, I'm so surprised. I stand. I'm so surprised. I'm an Italian and I don't even. F- <laughs> it, wait, 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 wait. So that means Nick is is coming under my there affliction. Are, there are four groups, Nuga groups debuting this month. <laughs> what do Nick, you want me to do? Nick is coming down with my affliction of not being able to learn names. Yay. Oh. Man. What do you mean? I already know all of Red Square and I already know all of Secret Number. Whoa, 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 whoa. You cheated with Red Square because half the members came from Good Day. Yeah, but the <laughs> names changed. <laughs> but you know the members from Good Day. So that's yeah. like additional glue. You, you, you already have. I know you, half you of Hua. Ha- <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh. Look. You don't understand the amount. Of, there is a 15-member girl group debuting. I'm not even gonna bother with them, man. I'm not. I have to learn that. I'm, I'm, I'm not, man. So. Well, I mean, we'll listen to it. It's just remembering all the names is really hard. All right, all right. All right. Dude, the fan, the fan chant's gonna be nuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't you mean the fan song? I, 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 yeah, the fan song. <laughs> I, I want to I want to I want to actually hear the fans chant for the Oh yeah that, that fan chant group. is gonna be amazing. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so with with UMVs, um I definitely I definitely do get that, that like straight kids vibe. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I definitely feel like there is a similar, there 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 is a similarity between the two. Yeah, at least for the song. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that that they're ripping off the style either. It's just, you know, it, I would say I probably noticed it within the first thirty or forty seconds of the song. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna be down with this because I'm getting like a straight kids uh, kind of hard hitting vibe. But the musical, but the style, their style, man, is it, it, like is definitely different. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it. So don't don't ever take that as as me saying like they're ripping off straight kids or anything like that. No, not even close. Yeah, and for a group that gets this amount of views, their vocals are seriously strong. On point, like yeah. seriously on point. Yeah, the, it, the, it's the, actually the, crazy. Like that's why the I was, video quality too is really is really high yes. for it. Yes, that and that so that yeah, be, it was because of the video that when I looked down at how many views it had, I'm like, yo, yeah, only that and many I mean, views? It, this will this will definitely grow over time. Give mm-hmm. you up because timeless timeless had 151 thousand views. Okay, okay, right. so I think it'll definitely grow over time, but it's a very slow growth for this group. Mm-hmm. Um, which if they just de- since they just debuted in Korea, you know, it it makes sense. You know, essentially they're a rookie group again. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, they have a few more advantages, but virtually a rookie group. Mm-hmm. So, which they're putting all those advantages on display in this in this song in this music video because it, it oh, is yeah. it is very much on point. So, Aura, why don't you go ahead and take us through this music video, man? Like, you know, because I, I, I thought it was pretty impressive too with the level of production quality. The the production quality, like, it's my. W- this is one of my favorite scenes was the raining scene mm-hmm. uh, it usually like i hate rain scenes not because um like uh, of the theme or whatever it's because i've seen so many movies that do the rain scene terribly yeah. because it's just doesn't make sense but with this the how they use the scene to show uh that wanting to con di- like despite everything that's going on around them the desire of not wanting to let go of someone that desire desire of that person this music video was all about not give on obviously title not giving up right. on people and it was done so beautifully because i've seen some movies where the the, the people would use a water, a water hose to simulate rain yeah. it would come in at like a 45 degree angle i'm like so, i have never seen rain come up in a or even a 30 degree angle i'm like what well i i have but usually during typhoon season in okinawa so oh. you still have the high winds blow it but like that's like, yeah but that 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 is actually one of my nitpicks too about those type of scenes because the, the drops will also be so fat and thick like oh they're not going to be like that if you have high, high winds mm-hmm. yeah so that's right. just me I mean, nitpicking the authenticity of the scene that's all oh that's just yeah, yeah. so yeah definitely so, i think definitely my favorite scene in here was the the sand scene at the end the sand scene was really good um i i, another th- I really like the the scene oh. where they're showing like the the universe as a backdrop mm-hmm. i that, really that- like those so um that backdrop they did it amazingly because it blended so well with the members and the rest of the scene yeah. um it it's the opposite feeling than i had with uh i'm, I'm forgetting that the taeyeon song um it wasn't happy it was the one where it had the sunset as the backdrop oh it, yeah that was last year too Oh, yeah, man. that was last year. Um, how, how I said I hated the back, the song, yeah. and everything. Uh, so much of it was good, but this how they set everything up for the music video, like the backdrop. How I, I hated it because it just it didn't feel. It felt disconnected. It was such a poor quality that Taeyeon didn't deserve. To Taeyeon deserved a very much higher quality. This one was the opposite, where it took the image, the background, and made it such a higher quality video. Yeah, it, it it was just amazing. And then very similar to, uh, obviously they didn't have him jump off of an, of an actual building. Right. That that that's just 
suicide in itself, but how they were able to utilize the set to create an imagery that to simulate him jumping off of a building. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I also thought that one scene that jumping for that risk. You know, what was it? Um, you were like in a hallway, and then one after another, the members were coming in with their lines, but like that kind of like the the way it was pan the camera and sweep and zoom in um the way they executed that scene was very well done like it was mm-hmm. it was a very busy uh like very busy in terms of like uh the camera work and the and the amount of work that needs to to pull off that kind of scene but right. on, on screen um you got i remember I had a chance to get had a chance to get a close-up and show off some emotions mm-hmm. and show off you know show off that their you know their their camera um yeah like it, it was it, great it it was busy but not chaotic. Right. It, it, right. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. This thought, this this music video was, was very very impressive. Uh, yeah. I I think that's something that some people get confused a lot is, oh yeah, it's it, it's a very busy music video. Mm-hmm. Being busy isn't always bad. It's how the busyness is kind of utilized and yeah. scenes with like the flowers scene, it it was very busy but it worked. For that scene, yeah. the flowers were not a distraction; they were an enhancement. Right. It was a very busy scene, but it helped to enhance that scene. Um, so no, it 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 was very good. And then not only that, but the way that they ut- again, how they utilized the members to uh, basically be a part of the music video, not not just as Oh yeah, we we have to show off our members, but no, they made it so the members are a part of the music video, and that that was shown beautifully. It, yeah, so almost cinematic. So, are we ready to declare our picks of the week for a music video? Jihoon, you can go first. Yep, Jihoon first. How do I choose? How do I choose? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, how do I choose? Because this lineup was uh, is just another strong lineup for me. Not only that, but mm-hmm. there's so many m- more that we haven't talked about and sh- probably shouldn't talk about since we've hit it like an hour now. Yeah. Uh, so, oh man, we just have to say Big GL on the song with Day Six Bandit and you- Universe. <laughs> this guy. Right. This guy. All right. So basically, he just picked all four that we just talked about. Yep. Yes. Hundred percent. All right, Aura. Well, all right, all right, all right. If I had to pick based on based on my mood, though, based on my mood, Bandits Jungle. Okay. okay. That that carried me through nah. this week, man. Now, that, that, well, that and I'm I'm still on, on my girl from, you know, last week. So. Same. Same. I, I'm I'm uh, Nick will bring it up later, but uh, I'm still stuck on another song. Uh, <laughs> um. For me, it's, it's a it's a tough choice. I really love Day Six's Zombie because it's so relatable and it's so beautiful, mm-hmm. and it wasn't overly difficult or busy, but at the same time, it was able to convey a message. Um, but at the opposite end, Bandit, it was so wonderfully done, and it really showed the talents and differences of having similar concepts but in their own style mm-hmm. uh, for other uh, Latin based groups um, I would have friggin' A uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to go with Day 6 for this one nice alright well uh, <laughs> I the struggle is real. I have to give it to Universe, which is not a bad Universe. pick either. Yeah, not. A I bad really pick. wanted to give it to Big Z Young and Own Song. I know, right? Like that but, was so good. That was so good. But I, I definitely have to give it to Universe. Universe is putting in a lot of work, and they're doing so well. Right. Um. And I mean, I might, I, I think I stand. Same, same. Like they're, this is a really powerful uh, show. We'll have, to, we'll have to go listen to Timeless after this because we didn't talk about it before. No. All right. So, gentlemen, 
let's go ahead let's get right to uh taking on to quick shots with nick and ayu <laughs> so we're actually bringing in i am just joking um <laughs> I, I wish i wish I, wish. So, I would be so nervous uh so might be wondering what it, what does that mean iu has been in the news a lot recently she's done a lot of great things obviously you know mm -hmm. uh, do, uh doing the doing i use eight as well um so uh earlier on may 4th uh it was iu had announced that she made a donation to green umbrella children foundation to celebrate children's day mm -hmm. um which and which she's also known as one of the most um was it most giving most charitable yep. uh, artists out there and here right. here's why so she gave on, on may 4th to children's day okay um on may 6th she honored family month by donating 10 million won to the fam to uh young Pyong county to help families with like uh that are raising uh single parents and grandparents that are raising children um also to celebrate her birthday, which is, I believe, today, uh, today for for us, which is May sixteenth, um, she's celebrating her birthday in a special way. Her agency uh, took to the Instagram account to share two donations uh, on May sixteenth uh, in celebration of IU's birthday. IU and Yuena, IU's fan club name, have shared warmth with the world. The, they donated uh, fifty one point six million won. Which is approximately forty-one thousand uh, dollars, almost forty-two thousand dollars, to Ch Child Fund Korea and Walking with Us Children's Foundation, yeah. under the name Iuena, <clears throat> a combination of Iu and Uena's name. Um, also, to add on to this, uh, giving you shall receive. Uh, when Iu released her new song Eight, uh, produ produced by and featuring BTS's Sugar on May six, it it achieved a perfect all kill. Yep. So, if you don't know what a perfect all kill means, different it, it differs from an, a regular all kill. Uh, on May 11th, I tried to announce that Aiden also had achieved a perfect all kill. Basically, what that means is a song is number one on a song. A song receives our certified all kill when it's number one on the daily and real time charts of Melon, Genie, Bugs, and Sorry Bada. Uh, Vibes daily chart and the real time charts of Flow and I chart. A perfect all kill means the song is also top to I charts weekly. Yep. So um there will probably be a picture somewhere but basically it's number one in the entirety of korea yeah i mean there's zero songs beating it and can i say her release of the acoustic version is yep so along with uh along with donating for with uh for her birthday she also gave her fandom a an acoustic version of eight uh where obviously you know sugar can't be in it very busy person right. um but she actually did the rap herself which is definitely unexpected from a lot of us it is also uh, it also is celebrating the achievement of her three million subscribers on youtube oh the longtime fans would also note that ayu has shown off some rap skills before in variety yeah. shows in variety shows of course which is just as cringy yep. as it sounds But she knows it. She loves it. You know, we all. She, 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 she she's such a she big dork, loves it. and that's why we love her. Definitely, if you like this, if you like eight, definitely go listen to the acoustic version. Yes. It is amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> are you wrap this up, or is that oh, still going? Uh, uh, are we ready? I'm, I, I've I've got some extra news too. What you got? What you got? Um, so, uh, some other stuff that's come up. Uh, as we know, KCON has either been canceled or postponed throughout most of the world. Um, no. But KCON did announce a 24-hour, seven-day, week-long event where they're going to stream non-stop uh, to basically subsidize KCON um, to everyone who can't attend. Uh, called KCON Connect. So that's happening, I believe, June twentieth to June twenty sixth. So yeah. If you guys and, can go, definitely make sure you do. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to. Okay, I'm not going to stay up for twenty four seven the entire time. 
but I'm going to try to listen to as many of the songs as possible. Definitely. But, and then uh, the Eyes One movie that was originally postponed from November of 2019 will be mm-hmm. releasing June 10th. Uh, okay. Okay. So yeah. Soon. Uh, the eye. Yeah. Uh, the eyes on me. Uh, movie. Will be releasing soon. It's going to be very similar to the whole Twice movie and BTS movie. Show of their concerts. So. Yeah. Okay. Right yeah. on. Cool. Cool. So let's wrap this up. You think you're about ready? Do it. All right. This has been. A, I'll just. <laughs> 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 oh, I messed it up. No. <laughs> Once in a blue moon, I mess up our, our outro. All right, let's try this again. Uh, wait, you mess up like 25% of the time. That's not a once in a blue moon. You can't remember you're old. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's staying in, by the way. So, uh. my dog wants to do the outro. Thank you for watching. This has been Idle Stand Nation. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Click that bell icon if you want to know when we upload in the future. Uh, we have a Discord. Make sure you go to that. We also kind of drop teasers of what we're going to be talking about for the next week. You can also now see that we are recording, so you know that if there's going to be an upload next week or not. Uh, what else? Uh, we have a Twitter. Make sure you go follow that. Um, and yeah, so we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye. 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 Stan SIS.